So welcome to our home and Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Joy and Noel. This is the season for us to give thanks for our Christ child. And look how beautifully this house is decorated. All the work and hand of my wife, Mary Ellen, who's a creative woman. Looks like Bon would tell us with it. Hi, everyone. As we just greeted you outside of our home at Rancho Lotto, you can see it's brittle cold outside. The snow is snowing. It's a blizzard here in South Florida. Nah, not really. But here we are indoors, and we're relaxing and enjoying a little afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and we thought it'd be a good time to wish you all a Merry Christmas. So welcome to Along the Way Life's Journey. We're your hosts, Mary Ellen and Carl Bucciolato. And we are delighted to have you with us today. So we thought it would be fun, fun to just tell some fun stories, personal experiences of our growing up at Christmas time. And so I want to start by telling a story. When I was a little girl, I was six years old. And at the time, I had an older brother, Rudy, who was 18. 18. And during that time, late 50s, early 60s, he was the Fonz. If you ever seen American Graffiti or Happy Days or whatever, my brother, they made those characters, the Fonz, after my brother. Yeah, but he didn't copy Henry Winkler. Henry no, Winkler copied him. Right. <laughs> he had the leather jacket, the T-shirt, the jeans, the loafers, the slick back hair. My brother was cool of cool. And so you can imagine me being six years old and him being 18. Anytime he gave me any attention, I was thrilled. I looked up to my brother so much. Well, this one day it was snowy, windy. It's the week of Christmas and we lived in the country. All the kids went uh, sliding. There's, there was this one hill in the backyard in the neighborhood that we all took our sleds and went sliding. Now there was two children in the neighborhood that had flying saucers. Now, what a flying saucer was, it was an aluminum disc that it looked like a flying saucer with two little handles and you would sit, cross your legs, and you would go down the hill in the flying saucer. And this, these things would fly, let me tell you. Well, this one day, my older brother comes up. He's not working. He took the day off. He had the day off and he came up to see what the kids were doing sliding on the hill. Well, my brother saw this flying saucer and being 18 years old, he goes, hey, I want to have some fun, too. And so he said, Mary Ellen, you want to go down the hill in the flying saucer with me? Well, I was like, are you kidding? Going down the hill in the flying saucer with Rudy? <laughs> and so now let me paint a little backdrop. I told you how my what my brother had on, the black leather jacket, the jeans, real cool loafers. But I was dressed like the little kid in a Christmas story. Remember little Randy with the wet, with the big woolen snowsuit, wrapping it around, you know, 20 sweaters underneath, the black rubber buckle boots, the, the hood, the mittens. Well, that was me. So Rudy says, come on, Muriel, we're going down the hill in the flying saucer. Rudy gets in, folds his leg, puts me on his lap. I fold my leg and we get to the top of the hill and the kids push us. And down the hill we went, flying. Well, I was laughing so hard, so hard. You can imagine what just <laughs> happened. I was laughing so hard, I peed <laughs> And I peed my pants, not only my pants, but all over my brother as well. <laughs> laughing so hard, laughing so hard. Well, we get to the bottom of the hill, and you can see the steam rising up <laughs> off of my pants. My brother gets up and he looks down and he's soaking wet. And he takes me, he goes, you just peed all over me. <laughs> he picks me up, he throws me in the snow. And he goes, that's the last time you're going down there with me. I walk all the way home in the snow in this wet woolen snowsuit laughing so hard. I said, I know Rudy is mad at me, but I just had the time of my life. And I can remember it like it was yesterday. Now you folks may not remember, <laughs> but I remember woolen outer clothes in the wintertime and what they would smell like when they got wet. When, when they got wet with the little girl's pee in them, that, must, that, that really must have been cool. unbelievable. I remember we'd I'd go in the house and take the woolen uh, gloves off and the woolen pants off and put it over the radiator. Ooh. We used to have a radiating heat. It was radical. To, <laughs> to, keep the, to keep the house warm. You know, 
and you'd put it over there and the, the steam would come up through the wool and that smell. Would... Oh, the wet wool. Oh, yeah. You it know, it's terrible. And some of you still have that today. Today they have these modern technology fabrics, you know, but we used to put our gloves, our mittens, <laughs> our boots on the radiator. The whole kitchen would stink wet wool. You know, I mean, the good old days, right? And, and I remember a story about the good old days. My mother's younger brother, Mario, who we lovingly called Uncle Sonny. He was just a few years older than I was. And he, he would give me all his hand-me-downs. And he was so he gave me a pair of hand-me-down rubber boots. And in a blizzard of 1949, none of you will remember this, but in 1949, there was such a severe blizzard, the entire Northeast locked down. The city of New York was locked down. You couldn't move. We were in the house for days and days at a time. And so my mother said, okay, you can go out and play in the snow, but you have to wear your rubber boots. <laughs> So I put these rubber boots on, opened the door, ran out to the street, and suddenly my feet were wet and cold. And I said, what happened? The boots got sucked in by the snow. I turned around behind me and there's footprints of my footprints and the boots are in the snow. And I ran right out of them. Feet don't fail me now. Boots don't fail me now. It was hilarious. He ran right out of his boots. Oh, different, different times. That is funny. That is funny. Another time I remember growing up and um, this was the year that this, the, the Christmas song had just come out, Little Drummer Boy. Now, at that time, I was, again, seven years old. My sister Jean was uh, nine years old and my little brother Ernie was five years old. Now, guess what Ernie was asking Santa for for Christmas? He wanted a set of drums which I have to say, by the way, my brother and his son today are radical drummers. Drummer. But it started when Ernie was five years old and he wanted these drums so bad. Now, let me paint the, the scene. It's Christmas Eve and my mother with six kids in the house <laughs> has a rule. The kids got to go to bed early for Santa to come. My mother couldn't wait to get us in bed <laughs> <laughs> so she could have a break. So she told us, you little ones have to go to bed early because Santa's not going to come until you're all asleep. So upstairs, the bedroom was like a dormer bedroom. And we had four girls with two bunk beds. And then there was a little tiny bedroom upstairs. I mean, it really wasn't even a bedroom. It was a closet, but you could fit a little twin bed in there. And my brother, Ernie, slept in that little room. And Jeannie and I were in the room because we were youngest. So we went to bed in the bunk beds. Now, seven o'clock at night, Christmas Eve, kids don't want to go to sleep at seven o'clock, but we had to stay in bed because we had to fall asleep so Santa could come. So what did we do to try to help us fall asleep? We decided we're going to sing Christmas songs. So of course, we're doing silver bells and silent night and jingle bells, and we're going through all the songs, but the greatest and the happiest song was the newest song, Little Drummer Boy. So Jeannie and I start singing, Come they told me, pa rum pa pom pom And all of a sudden, from the hall across the way, we hear, <laughs> singing, and he was drumming, and he was the symbol from a newborn king to sing, pa rum pa pom pom <laughs> we laughed my sister and i laughed so hard well we finally fell asleep and curlers in our hair the whole nine yards well now the other house rule in my house was my parents waited till we all fell asleep around midnight and then they said when santa comes he's going to ring the bell and then you can get up and open up your gifts. Why? So that if we opened up our gifts at midnight, then my parents could sleep late the next morning. <laughs> so we had that second year. We fall asleep. And as Santa is coming and doing his thing, my parents have an eight millimeter movie camera. And remember those uh, Bell and Howell eight millimeter movie cameras with the rack of floodlights that you could land a plane with. And so my father stood at the foot of those stairs and my mother rang the bell. Well, of course, we're upstairs. We hear the bell and oh my gosh, it came. we come flying down the stairs only to be hit with these floodlights in our eyes. <laughs> and 
my mother looks and she goes, oh no, the girls have curves in there. <laughs> well, that wasn't going to work, right? So we stopped dead in our tracks like deer in the headlights with curlers in our hair going, ah, on the whole movie. See, um, now that explains it. My <laughs> wife is her mother's daughter. There's no doubt about it. Before we started shooting this show today, to wish you a Merry Christmas, she had me take the curlers out of my hair. Right. Thank you can't go on television with a curler in your hair. Right. And just so that people would know who is Carl and who is Mary Ellen, I straightened my hair. Uh -huh. the, the, the yin and the yang. Right. right. So I have a, a fond memory. Well, it seems like we're remembering lots of things from when we were little kids. And this particular memory, folks, is over 70 years old because I'm now 80 years old. But I was probably eight or nine years old. And uh, it was a. It was the night before Christmas. Well, the night before the twenty third. My dad got home from work in the afternoon. It had rained all day long. We were living in Brooklyn. Rained all day long, and my dad said before, even before dinner, he said, "Come on, boys, we're going to go get a Christmas tree." And he took my brother Joe, who was younger than I. I was maybe eight or nine. He's three years younger than I, so he would have been about six, you know, somewhere around there, five or six. And so we went out to the avenue to buy a Christmas tree. And we buy a Christmas tree. And in the afternoon, the rain had stopped. And when the rain stopped, it got very cold, very cold. And everything was freezing. And so everywhere that had been wet from rain crystallized and became ice. And we were walking, the streets were ice. And the, you looked in the trees and all the dew and the drops hanging from the, the branches were like diamonds. And ice castles. You know, it, was, it was just beautiful. So we pick out a tree. We start to go home. My brother can't ma manage it on the sliding on, the, side uh, in on the ice. So my dad picks him up, puts him on his shoulder. And with one hand, he holds on to his knee so Joe doesn't fall off his shoulder. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the other hand, he holds on to the tree. And here I am, the big son. I'm going to help him. So I grab with my right hand. And between the two of us, my dad and I, we drag the tree two or three blocks home. We take it up into the apartment, set it up. And we're setting it up and warm and putting the lights on. And suddenly my mother turns out the lights and she says, look, look outside. So we look out the window and right in front of the window of our house is a street lamp. And it had all turned to snow and the snow was falling in heavy interlays. And you could see it with a haze around it from the, so from, the from the street light. And it really looked magical. It was magical. Well, about 20 years, 25 years ago, my brother and I were reminiscing and remembering that story. Well, we were both uh, had subscriptions to the Italian American magazine. So I wrote an article, unbeknownst to him, and I submitted it about Christmas memories. And they printed it in the magazine. Well, my brother gets his subscription and he opens it up and he's reading it. And he says, hey, they stole our story. <laughs> Carl said, read the fine print. Look at the author. Look at the author. <laughs> and it was Carl. So he's a, And they had such a laugh about that. Oh, my, my God. I love my brother dearly, and we laugh often about many Oh, things. my gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so uh, the final story we want to tell is, um, you know, Carl and I have a special, Christmas is a special time for us because we met at Christmas time. We've been married 15 years now, and 16 years ago is uh, the time of year that we met. And I have to tell the story because it's it, it's really a story of hope and encouragement. I, I have to backtrack to the Thanksgiving. That Thanksgiving, I um, I didn't have any family. I live in Florida. I was single. I didn't have any family. And that particular Thanksgiving, I ended up getting very sick with the flu. And I stayed home. I was home alone with a box of tissues, Campbell's chicken noodle, nickel, chick, uh, chicken noodle soup, and a bologna sandwich. And I sat there and I was like, it was pitiful. I was sitting by myself in my house and just miserable, sneezing, coughing, chicken soup alone. And I was like- I'm getting any worse than that. <laughs> I said, you know, that's pretty pathetic, pretty lonely. And But I remember at the end of that day, I said, you know what? I am not going through Christmas like this. I, my, some of my circumstances might not change, but I'm gonna change my attitude. And so I said, you know what, I, I've come to understand that happiness is based on circumstances, but joy is based on your, your spiritual attitude. And so I said, you know, you can have joy even in the midst of sorrow. So I said, you know what, I am going to choose joy going into Christmas because I'm not having a Christmas like I had Thanksgiving. So I decide not only am I going to choose joy, but I am going to deem myself 
the joy meister. And now what a joy meister does is a joy meister goes around bringing joy to other people. So I said, you know, maybe some of my circumstances aren't changing, but I can bring joy to other people. So I, I, I prayed. I said, God, put people in my path that I can bring a smile to, that I can bless, that I can pray with, that uh, just be present to make Christmas a brighter season. And so I just deemed myself the joy meister. And it got to the point where it was very contagious. Every time I'd answer my phone, I'd go, hello, home of the joy meister. And people, my friends quickly caught on to the point when they would call the house and I would say, hello, they go, is the joy meister home? And it became contagious. Everybody was taking on that attitude of being a joy meister and finding somebody to bless during that Christmas season. And so, and I just want to introduce... The Joy Meister. <laughs> there he is, the Joy Meister. <laughs> now, for me and for Carl and I, as a Joy Meister, this J, this J O Y stands for something special to us. It stands for Jesus first, others second, and you last. And so, if you have joy in that order, you will have joy no matter what your circumstances are. He looks so, a little like me, is that? Yeah. <laughs> and so at the time I was single and I had been praying for God to bring me his best for a husband. I didn't want to pick, you know, for myself. I said, God, I want you in on the equation and I want to pray that you would bring me your best. And during that time, and uh, and that was Thanksgiving, Carl and I met on December 9th, which was probably 10 days after that Christmas, after I had decided to be the joy meister, after I decided I was going to change my attitude if I couldn't change my circumstances, and I was going to be focused on bringing joy and happiness to people at Christmas. Now, as Carl and I met each other, we established a friendship at first, then we started dating. He showed me this one day. He said, look, I just want to show you that as I was praying for a wife and as he was praying for God to bring him the one that he had for him, he had written out things that he wanted. He was praying for in a wife. And at the top of the list, he said, I want a faithful, faith filled woman of joy. And there it was written right on his prayer card that he was praying every day. And That's I, what I got. and I believe that God was timing was perfect. He waited to bring me to a place where I was really going to choose joy, sometimes in spite of my circumstances. And Carl was praying for a joy-filled woman of faith. And so Christmas 16 years ago, the joy meister, which is Jesus first, came into our life. And that's how we met. So this Christmas season, we celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. They say, you've heard it said before, Jesus is the reason for the season. And the best gift that ever was given was given to us. And it's available for all of you who receive it. And of course, it is Jesus, the Christ child, who came to give his life in ransom for many, that we would all be able to be with him in heaven. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as we close this video, um, I did a, a recording singing Oh Holy Night. I'm not a professional singer, but I did record the song Oh Holy Night. And we're going to play it for you now. And I hope that as you listen to the words of Oh Holy Night and you watch the video, that it blesses you with the true meaning of Christmas. And so this is our gift from our house to your house, that the Christ child not only be in the gift box, but in our, in our hearts so that we can share it with others. And now let's listen to this beautiful hymn. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Love you all. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world Rejoices for yonder breaks a 
a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, night divine, oh, night when Christ was born.